Meanwhile, picturesque areas such as Luckham, Whitecliffe Bay and Bembridge continued to be havens for those looking for sand and sea, with perhaps a little less hustle and bustle of some of the island's other locations. Sandown didn't really develop until the coming of the railway and subsequent tourist boom during the mid-19th century. The pier, probably its best-known landmark, was opened in 1876. Like the beach, perhaps surprisingly, the boating lake and Brown's Golf Centre remained virtually unchanged since these pictures were taken during the 50s. Much the same can be said for neighbouring Shanklin, which might account for the fact that regular visitors return year after year. How's that for a typical English scene? Shanklin Cricket Club pitching leather against Willow. Although only three miles or so along the coast from Shanklin, Ventnor also used to have its own pier and trips by boat from town to town were as popular as ever. Perhaps you recall taking one. A few miles west, the holiday camp at Atherfield was another popular spot. And at this time, the island had its share of sporting events, such as this cycle race and the car rally through Ventnor.
that's something you wouldn't see today. On the first Thursday of September each year, it was carnival time in Ryde, and for a number of years, the Breston Highlanders lent their support. The functions of some of the buildings may have changed and further high street chains have moved in, but Newport, the island's capital, is unmistakable. Nearby Carisbrook Castle dates back in part to the 14th century. Its timeless quality and historic significance as the place in which Charles I was kept prisoner has made it a favourite location among visitors for decades. Another slice of the island's history, often included in a tour, has long been braiding. The central building is one of the oldest on the island and is home to the ancient public stocks. The old bull ring is also in the village, although it has been repositioned. And so it's on with the tour through other picturesque villages such as Shanklin and God's Hill. Far eastern shore of the island, St Catherine's Lighthouse, standing 86 feet high, looks much the same here as it does today. But when first opened in 1840, it had a height of 142 feet. It was lowered 35 years later because the light was so often hidden by fog. The Isle of Wight can boast better than average weather, miles of beautiful beaches and a diverse landscape which has led to references such as the Garden Isle and Little England. Perhaps it's not surprising then that tourists have come here since before Victorian times. <laughs> 